Welcome to the IT free training video on the new features added to Windows Storage Spaces in Windows Server 2012 R2. Storage Spaces was first introduced in Windows Server 2012 and Windows 8 and is a system that allows multiple hard drives and solid state drives to be grouped together. In this video I will look at the five new features of Windows Storage Spaces added in Windows Server 2012 R2. Most of the features shown are transparent and automatically available to the administrator. There are two features, however, which the administrator can choose if they want to use the additional functionality. The first feature that I will look at is Storage Tiers. Storage Tiers store data that is accessed more often on solid state drives and less used data on traditional hard drives. By using a mixture of solid state and hard drives, this can significantly improve access times. In this example, I have a number of hard drives and solid state drives connected to the system. There are six hard drives and four solid state drives. All these drives are combined together using Windows Storage Spaces in a single storage pool. In this case, since the solid state drives are faster than the hard drives, you want the solid state drives to be used for files that are accessed frequently. To do this, drives can be divided into two tiers the solid state tier and standard hard disk tier. This allows storage spaces to move files that are accessed frequently onto the solid state tier and put less used files on the hard disk tier. In this example, a simple virtual disk and a mirrored virtual disk were created. Storage tiers currently does not support parity. When virtual drives are created, Windows will ask how much space should be used on the solid state tier and how much should be used on the hard disk tier. The administrator is free to choose this amount. The next feature that I will look at is Write Back Cache. This feature allows solid state drives to be used as a cache for the mechanical hard drives. This cache is used for small random writes. Often in enterprise systems, small random writes form a large percentage of the workload. Since mechanical drives are slow for random writes, having a lot of small random writes slows down the overall system. For this reason, having these random writes cached on solid state drives before being transferred to the slower mechanical drives does a lot to speed up the overall responsiveness. The good news with write back cache is that it is configured by default. Whenever you create a new virtual drive in Windows Server 2012 R2, the write cache will be enabled using the solid state drives. This feature is also used with storage tiers. When you create a virtual disk using storage tiers, a larger write cache will be created on the solid state drives. The important point to remember is that redundancy needs to be maintained even when using a combination of solid state and hard disk drives. For this reason, the write back cache requires the following. For a simple space, it requires one solid state drive. A two-way mirror requires two solid state drives and a three-way mirror requires three solid state drives. If you do not have the required number of solid state drives, the write back cache is disabled since data redundancy cannot be achieved. The next new feature is parity support for failover clusters. This means that Windows Server 2012 R2 now supports simple, mirror and parity for drives created for clusters. Previously in Windows Server 2012, parity was not supported for clusters. This gives the administrator more redundancy options using Windows Storage Spaces with clusters in Windows Server 2012 R2. The next feature is Dual Parity. Parity is available in Windows Server 2012, allowing the storage pool to keep operating with the loss of one drive. In Windows Server 2012 R2, support has been added to store parity on two drives. This allows a virtual drive with parity to survive two drive failures. When creating a virtual disk using the parity layout, the administrator has the option to use dual parity. Dual parity does require at least seven drives in the storage pool. If you have less than seven drives, only single parity will be available. The last new feature in Windows Storage Spaces is automatic rebuilding of storage spaces from storage pool free space. 
What this essentially means is that when a drive fails and a rebuild needs to occur, the drive can be rebuilt to free space, assuming enough disks are in the storage pool and there is enough free space. If a hot swap drive was in a storage space, the data from the failed drive would be rebuilt onto the hot swap drive. Using a hot swap means that a large number of drives may need to be read and written to a single drive. This is a very slow process. In Windows Server 2012 R2, rather than use a hot swap drive, the data from the missing drive is instead copied to the free space in the storage space, meaning there is no need to have hot swap drives. Let's consider the following example. There are four drives in the set. If the second drive was to fail, the data on this drive would need to be rebuilt onto the other drives. Rather than copying this data to another free drive like a hot swap drive, instead the data is rebuilt to the free space. As shown, the three drives have free space, so the data on the second drive is recreated on the other drives. Since the data is being created on three drives, this is a lot faster than recreating the data on the one replacement drive and also eliminates the need for hot swap drives. All you need to do is ensure that there is enough free space and disks in the storage space to tolerate failed drives. That covers all the new features of Windows Storage Spaces in Windows Server 2012 R2. I hope you found this video informative and I hope to see you in other videos from us on Windows Storage Space. Thanks for watching and see you next time.